This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we will show you how to pipe a buttercream ranunculus, from making your colors to piping your blossoms. The lesson will be broken down into segments, so you can skip ahead and rewatch as desired. We're gonna cover color mixing, the bags and tips that we're using, the techniques, and then we'll talk about how you're actually going to Combine those to build your flowers. We'll practice it on a nail and on a cupcake as well. We hope you'll enjoy this one and check out more videos in our flower series and on our channel. Color mixing. For our ranunculus, we're gonna make four colors. Two greens, one's a little darker, another more yellowy and citrus, and two kind of salmon colors to make us a nice, beautiful floral blossom with some depth and some color variation. And we're gonna get started with our darkest green. And we're using liquid gel colors, and we're gonna use royal blue, lemon yellow, sunset orange, neon bright pink, and red red. So onto our first green color, I've got just a little bit of that lemon yellow and some of my royal blue out here. I'm just gonna start with a couple of specks of that royal and the same amount of that lemon because I wanna make a shade that's kind of a, almost like a true green, right? So kind of equal balance of blue and yellow. So we'll get this mixed around and depending on how large my specks are, it looks like I might have a bit more blue in there right now. And I might just need to add a little bit of yellow. But we're looking to make a nice shade, not too light that it would be like a pastel, but also not too dark. So we're a little more sea foam right now, so definitely a little more on the yellow. And if that takes it too far, we'll just add a tiny bit more blue and then we should be good. So I'm looking to make a nice kind of medium value color. It's not too light, not too dark. And I think that's gonna do it. So we have a nice, beautiful kind of green color it's just a little bit more yellow than blue, and I like where it is, so I'm gonna stop there. And we'll move on to our second shade. For our second green, we want a more citrusy vibe to it, maybe even just a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna start with a few flecks of that yellow, and just one super tiny one on that blue. So just kind of barely there on the blue. I think that's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna hold it up out of the bowl because the bowl is green as well. It's casting a little bit of a shadow. And you can see we have a nice kind of almost electric-y but well, slightly pastel green. It's a nice kind of light spring green. It's definitely more yellow than it is blue. And it's got that nice kind of citrus feel to it and that little bit of electric vibe that's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna move on to our first salmon color, and this one's gonna be a little lighter than the second one. And for this, we're gonna use a combo of orange. So just a few specks of that sunset orange and some of our neon bright pink. And this is a great way to get things in that kind of peach family salmon-y colors is to combo your pink and your orange together. It's gonna to make a nice in-between color that's gonna be really, really beautiful. And I think that's actually almost gonna be there. We want it to be kind of lighter, and the second shade we're gonna make is gonna be darker. So our flower is gonna be opening up. It's gonna be dark green in the center, kind of go a little yellowish, a little orange, and then be more pink salmon tone on the outside with a little more intensity. So I think we'll just go a little more pink and we should be good. I 
think that's going to be a beautiful color for us. It's kind of a light pastel peach color. It's really, really pretty and it reads just a little more pink than orange. So I think we're right where we need to be. So for our last color, we're going to use drops of food coloring and I've got some of my buttercream in the bowl and I'm going to use some of my red red, a little more pink, if my pink will cooperate, try and get two nice big drops out there, and one of that orange, because we're looking to make a nice salmon color that's a little bit deeper and has a slightly different tone or quality to it than the one we made before. And the one we made before it was just pink and orange, so we're adding a little bit of that red red and we're using more color. So this should make us a nice kind of deep salmon color. It should be really, really beautiful. And I think it's going to go really nice with the other colors we have going on. I don't really want it to be like true red or anything like that. I want it to definitely have some orange and pink to it. So it's got a nice deep salmon vibe to it. I think just a little more of that pink. And just some more of that orange and that should do it and put me right where I want to be where it's going to look really nice with the other shades we've created and create a really beautiful flower that has that feel like it's almost like an ombre opening up where you get those nice beautiful changes in color right, so that's our final color we have that nice beautiful deep salmon color so for this flower, we've got five bags going and we're going to go over the different tips that we have paired with each color. I have a bag of white with a number 12 tip. This can actually be any excess color. We're just using it to make the centers. So it doesn't actually matter what color it is. I just had some extra white on hand. So I threw it in the bag. We've got a 101 with our darker green tip. So a small petal tip, right? We can see right there, beautiful. And then we have a slightly larger 102 petal tip with our citrus color. We have a number 61, so that's a curved petal tip with our lighter salmon color. And we have a large 123, so it's a big curved petal tip with our darker salmon color. So we're gonna use these five bags to create our buttercream ranunculus. So before we get started piping, let's talk about our techniques. There's basically two things that we're doing here. We're piping a dot with our number 12 tip, and then we're using all of our petal tips. So the 102, 101, 61, and 123 to basically pull little lines on top of that mound that we've created, either in a straight motion or one that's kind of slightly arced, right? So even the straight ones have kind of a little bit of an arc to them sometimes, you'll see. So the first thing we want to do is that dot and that is going to be uh, either directly on the surface of a cake or a cupcake or on your flower nail. But the key with dots is to lift that number 12 tip up off the surface. You'll notice I'm holding the bag straight up and down and just give it a nice good squeeze. And we really want to build up a mound and then just kind of circle that tip off at the top. And it doesn't have to be perfectly round right? It can be a little lumpy. It's just the center of the flower. So don't worry about getting perfectly smooth dots. So really this is it. Number 12 tip. We just need a nice large dot to form that center and allow us to pipe our petals on and around it. And then with those petals, we're either going to pull straight lines or slightly arced ones, right? So they're going to have a slight arc to them. And anytime you're doing this, you think about that small skinny end of those petal tips as being kind of the top edge of the petal. So you want those pointed towards where the top edge of the petal is and the fat end is the base. It's really going to attach to this, right? And really make contact and be that support. And we're either going to pull straight or with a slight arc. So if you think about it, it's either going to be just A straight line or one that has a slight kind of arc to it right so just very easy very simple two things we're doing and we're doing both of these 
against the surface of this mound, so we'll lay them out a little differently. And because we're on a nail, we're gonna be spinning at the same time. And that's what's gonna allow us to form our petals, right? So we'll move to our next little setup and we'll talk about how we're gonna build this and we'll actually do some on a nail and a cupcake. All right, so we're gonna start talking about how we're gonna use those two techniques, right? The lines that we're gonna pull and the dot to build ourselves a ranunculus. And a lot of it is about the different tips that we're using. And the other part is how we hold those tips in relation to this dot. So we have our big dot of frosting. The first thing we're gonna do is take that 101, so think the darkest green color. We're gonna lay it so the opening of the tip is basically flush with the surface, right? The skinny end is gonna be pointed towards the center of the dot, and we're gonna make about three to four kind of tight petals that overlap that are gonna form that center. When we switch then to our 102, we've got a slightly lighter color. We're gonna pull the tip away from the center so that that fat end is kind of nested just underneath where those little petals start. And we're gonna rock the skinny end of the tip just up a little bit. And we're gonna start pulling a nice little soft arc rather than that flat line. So the petals will have just a little bit of a curve to the top as we spin around. And they're just gonna open up ever so slightly, right? So they're not gonna be tight and closed against the surface. They're just gonna be up a tiny bit. Then as we go to the next color, we're gonna have our 61, which is kind of curved in. So it's gonna give a nice shape to those petals. If you've ever looked at ranunculus, as they kind of bloom and open up, the petals have kind of a cupped nature to them. So using those curved tips really gives you a nice feel. We're gonna pull it further down and pull the tip open just a little bit more and we're going to use it to kind of build up some height up here because they kind of have a lot of layers of really really tight really fine thin petals and they kind of sit above those centers and then open up gradually so it's nice to build up a little bit of height and then finally once we do a few layers with that 61 and build up a tiny bit of height and a little bit on the side, we'll go around with the 123 and work our way to the bottom. And this one, we're gonna hold it so that that curved portion kind of tucks under the bottom and the skinny end is almost pointing straight up, right? And when we pull some nice soft arc shapes, that's really gonna finish the bottom of that flower and tuck those petals in either close to the nail or close to the surface of your cake or your cupcake. So it's really gonna give the flowers a nice finish. And anytime we're piping our petals, we're gonna do a nice overlapping pattern. So basically, we're gonna pipe the first one, and the start of the second one will overlap the end of that, and we'll just keep going around. So it's gonna give us a nice spiraled effect to all those petals, like they're all overlapping the one before, and it's gonna give it a really lovely, kind of neat, well, not really organized, but lovely pattern to it that's gonna remind you of a ranunculus and how they open up. They kind of tend to do that. The petals almost spiral open, so it's very beautiful. So we're gonna keep that overlapping pattern the entire way. The only one that's not really gonna have it is the center because we're probably only gonna do three or four petals, so it won't make that, but once we start with that 102, we're gonna hold that overlapping pattern and do that all the way around. So the beginning of the next petal will always overlap the end of the one before it, right? So basically we start there, flat against the surface, and we're just gonna open up so that the point of those petals will be kind of towards noon and will be open and uh, nice straight up and down when we get to our 123. So we're just gonna take it gradually open up the petals of that flower so we get a lovely shape to it. So now that we've talked a little bit about what we're gonna do, let's pull out our flower nail and actually start piping. So we're gonna start building one of our flowers on our nail. I'm just gonna give it a nice little dab of buttercream so I can easily attach my piece of parchment paper. And I like doing these on parchment so I can easily lift them and put them on a tray afterwards. That way they can get nice and firm before I handle them to put them on any cakes or pastries. And you can see I've got my number 12 tip straight up and down. I'm just gonna build a nice big dot of frosting there in the middle of my nail. So I have lots of room to attach those wonderful petals. I'm gonna grab my second bag. So I've got my 101 tip with my nice darker green color. And like we talked about before, I'm gonna lay that tip so that it's flat against the surface. And I'm just gonna pull three little lines really straight. Make sure the ends overlap down so that you're not catching them later when you're laying on your petals. And that's gonna give me 
a nice, beautiful, closed center. So you're looking to make just a nice little kind of triangle-like enclosure, right? So that nice little closed area in the middle that's got several petals that are kind of intersecting and overlapping. I'm going to take my 102 and instead of being flat across, I'm going to just open the end up a little bit. I'm going to nest right the fat end down kind of underneath where those petals are. And I'm going to pull in a slight arc shape, right? So you can see that little arc. Wonderful. And I'm going to go so that each one is overlapping the one before. And it should take about five to six to get all the way around. And you can see that gives us another layer close to that center, right? But it started to open up and the color is just a little lighter. So that's going to be a wonderful transition. I'm going to pull my 61, which has my lighter salmon color. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go in between to start. Slight arch shape. And you can see just a little bit of that lighter color, but not a ton of it. That's fine. If you want to see more, pull it a little further down the side. And that's what I'm going to do for my next row of petals. I'm going to go a little further down. Open that tip up a little more. Each one lays on the end of the one before. And just go around until you have a nice, beautiful center. You can see how it's kind of got this nice, almost spiral-like opening up. If you want it to be even more spiral, make the petals a little shorter, overlap them more. More overlap will give you a more gradual spin to it. Right? So you can really change the look and the effect and the feel of these just by how long you're making the petals and how much area of overlap you give them. But you can see on the side, we're kind of left exposed. So I generally like to add just a tiny bit more buttercream. So if you've got quite a bit of a gap, just give yourself a little more to attach to. And then I'm going to use my larger tip and do the same thing. So just pull beautiful petals, make them overlap. You can see I'm holding it so that the point is kind of straight up and down and it's starting to nest already. And it'll probably take two layers of this darker color to get all the way around. I'm just gonna clean my tip up a tiny bit. And my fingers. And then I should be able to go in and really take that fat end and just nest it underneath, right? The edge of those petals and make a nice finish to everybody. And don't worry if you kind of catch the ones from before, as you see, it just removes those little tail ends. There we go. And just go around until you have a nice, beautiful finish to those petals. And you can see it gives you a wonderful, beautiful ombre fade and a beautiful kind of salmon, peachy, bittersweet orange color ranunculus. And you can do these in any color combination. And this is just a simple way to make a ranunculus with tips that most people have on hand. So we've done one on the nail. Let's do one on a cupcake now. I've got a nice little cupcake here. I've got my number 12 bag. I'm going to do the same thing I would do on my flower nail. Make sure that number 12 tip is up off the surface. You've got lots of room for that frosting to 
connect and build up a nice big mound in the center so you have something nice to work on and really build up those flowers. We'll pull out our 101 tip. And when I'm holding all of these bags, I'm changing the position of the opening of the tip, but one thing that stays the same is the angle of the bag. It's at a 45 degree angle in relation to the surface I'm piping on. And you'll notice the back end of the bag is kind of pointed towards the shoulder of the hand that I'm holding it with. So if I'm right hand, it's kind of gonna be grazing that right shoulder. If you're a lefty, it's just the opposite. It's gonna be pointed towards your shoulder, right? And that's gonna set you up in the right position so that when you're pulling, right, your little lines and arc shapes, and turning, whether it's the cupcake we're rotating or a flower nail, all those petals are going on the right direction. So it's not only important to have the angle of that tip oriented correctly and properly and be holding that in the right place, but also the position of your bag. Because if you're holding it at a funny angle, the frosting's not gonna do what it needs to and lay on properly. So we're gonna hold this one so it's right against the surface and we're gonna pipe those wonderful little lines just to get our center Right, so just a little trio, just to make a nice little closed center there. If you need to, right? Sometimes I feel like I cover up my first line too much. I'll go ahead and put a fourth one on there so I get a nice little closed center. I'll put that to the side. Grab my bag with my 102 tip. And this one, go ahead and just open that angle up a little bit, right? The fat end is kind of touching the bottom base where those other petals just end and just overlap the finish of the petal before. And that's gonna give us a slightly opening center, right? So we have the darker color, slightly lighter, and then we're gonna change up and go with our nice salmon colors. So first, our lighter salmon color with our 61 tip. And we're going to take this, right? Bag itself is at the same angle. We're gonna hold that tip so that it's opened up a little bit more. Start right underneath our green and pull those nice arc shapes, right? Beautiful little arcs. The more you overlap them, the more of a spiral you'll get. And you can leave more green showing or less depending on how you like them. And you can do things like you can change that up a little bit on each one you do, just to make it all look a little bit different. So you can make some nice varied looks. Do some more green in the center, right? Maybe a second layer with that citrus color before you go into your salmon and you'll have a slightly bigger center with more green showing. And the more layers you put on, the bigger your flowers will get. So if you're doing this and you get kind of a little bit of a buildup at the top and you're a little unsupported at the bottom, I usually just take and add a tiny bit more of that color, whatever you're using that's your extra with that 12, and just give it a nice little rim around the bottom and that'll give it something to connect to and make it so that it's not wobbly and unstable. And I think I'm gonna do one more layer on this. I usually end up doing two to three with the 61 tip before I switch over to my 123. And you can see now that I've got that extra layer on the bottom, it's easier for me to get these to attach and it makes the whole thing more stable. And the surface of my cupcake is a little bigger than my flower nail, so I can actually do a few more layers and get bigger, fuller blossoms. So 
will go down. So basically every time we're doing a layer, the fat end of the tip goes a little lower and the top end opens up just a little bit more. So we're gonna go start with our nice, beautiful, darker salmon color. And just lay those beautiful petals on. And you can see we're getting a wonderful color fade on this. And if we need to, just do two or three rounds of petals until I make it all the way to the bottom of the surface of the cupcake and I can make a really nice finish to that blossom. As you can see right now, I have a little bit of exposed. So I'm just going to make sure I go right next to the surface of the cupcake with my last round of petals so to get a nice finish to my flower and a nice look. Because we want them to look good from every angle. So I'm going almost straight with this last row of petals so that it'll really hug the surface. And if you have an extra bag with some green, a number 352 tip, and you can put a few leaves on there, but you can see this is an easy way to practice your ranunculus flowers, and you can fill up an entire cupcake really easy and do just a slightly bigger version of the one that we did on our flower nail. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.